I'm a Namaste guys, Kristen Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Thursday evening here in Denver, Colorado. It is 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time. It's still snowing. The snow is kind of melting, but it's still snowing. But we're jumping on for a daily dose of divine light, love, and power with a focus on the light aspect. And the light aspect. And this is a really, really, really important one, especially on the spiritual path. So, for instance, let's say you and I are having a conversation and I say your great-great-grandfather is telling me that you need to quit your job, sell all your possessions, and move to the mountains. How would you know whether that was true or not? Or, you have Isabella, I'm going to say you have option one, option two, option three, and someone scans or feels the energy and says, option two is the option you need to go with. How would you know? Or another example would be a psychic, a medium, a clairvoyant tells you what I got was you need to start eating oranges and only oranges twice a day for the next week because it's going to improve the quality of your health and well-being okay how do you know whether that's true or not true how can you validate that in your own life which this is all connected to the light aspect of the soul which deals with discernment which deals with accurate perception correct expression which deals with accurate uh which deals with with correct, uh, with accurate observation and correct interpretation. It's the light aspect. It's the ability to discern truth. Is someone telling you truth or is someone making it up as they go? How do you know? So in the world of psychics, mediums, clairvoyants, healers, things in the people that deal with the energy world, how do you know what they're saying to you is accurate, partially accurate, or completely inaccurate. And this is where discernment comes in. So two of the ways that Grandmaster Chol Koksui, my teacher, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Hatik Yoga, has come up with to help people practice discernment is number one, look at the track record of the person who is giving you the input. So if the person says, do this or don't do this, or I'm seeing this, or I'm not seeing this, or I'm feeling this or not feeling this, some Sixth sense that they're using, look at their track record. How accurate, Samantha, I'm going to say, how accurate are they with their assessment? If they're accurate and they have a track record of success of helping other people with similar conditions, like let's say somebody has been known to help people find lost items or lost children or lost people, that's their ninja power, right? Now, you can base it on marketing, you can base it on hype. Or you can check into the details and go, wow, out of 100 people that have come to this person to have them find someone or something, they're accurate 80% of the time. So the person has a track record of success. Therefore, it's pretty safe to trust in them and to take what they're saying as accurate or taking it at face value. But what if? They're right, or they're only right 5% of the time, and they're wrong 95% of the time. Well, do they have a track record of success? No, so it's probably best not to listen to them, right? The other thing is you can take what they're what the person is saying is temporary truth. Temporary truth. So you're like, you know what? In this moment, I can't validate or invalidate whether what that person is saying is true or not. So I'll take it as temporary truth. So what would be an example? We do the Twin Hearts Meditation every single day on this Facebook page. And I say, within 20 minutes of doing the Twin Hearts Meditation, you'll be physically fed, emotionally calm, mentally sharp, and, and spiritually fed. Jada, I'm going to stay. Now, you don't know if that's true or not. And you don't have a chance to ch check my track record of helping people have inner peace and happiness, right? So then you go, I'll take it as temporary truth. So you do the 20 minute meditation. How do you feel afterwards? 
you feel calmer, you feel more peaceful, you feel more centered, your mind is sharper. So you can take that as temporary truth. Huh, interesting. I've spent so much time doing pranic healing protocols over the past 16 years and experimenting, experimenting, experimenting that I have been pretty comfortable in validating the truth of my of my teacher, the, the teachings that he has provided. So I've developed an ability to practice discernment, but even still at my level, we're encouraged to practice discernment, to ask intelligent questions, do it politely, but ask intelligent questions. And you always have to experiment and then make your own conclusion. So nobody is going to tell you, do this because I said so. They're gonna say, this is the theory, this is the reason as to why we think the practice works, the technique works, you have to experiment and then draw your own conclusion. The problem is most people don't experiment for a long enough period of time to get the necessary feedback to validate or invalidate a principle. That's the problem, right? So for instance, somebody comes to me and says, Christian, I'm upset and I'm angry and I don't know what to do about it. And then I say, okay, well, who are you angry with? And the person says, I'm angry with uh, an ex. My ex-partner, I'm super, super angry with them. I can't let go of the anger. Okay, well, forgiveness is going to help you let go of the anger and it's going to heal you. It's going to give you inner peace and allow you to move forward in your life. But you have to practice the forgiveness every day for 30 days. That's the instruction. So don't have any expectations on it working or not working after 30 days. The person says, okay, fine. I'll do the forgiveness meditation. Let's see. They practice the forgiveness meditation once or twice. They still have anger towards the person. And they go, you know what? Forgiveness doesn't work. The forgiveness meditation doesn't work. Forgiving others doesn't work. Well, what are you basing that on? How did you come to that conclusion? One or two times of doing the forgiveness meditation? What was the protocol? Do it every single day for 30 days. Then reassess. Right? It would be similar to going to work out at a gym and you work out once, you're not super, super fit, super healthy um, at the top of your game and you go, exercise must not work, I quit. Right? That would be silly because you have the discernment techniques within you to discern whether that's accurate or not. Right? But when it comes to spiritual teachings or spiritual truths, you don't have that same degree of certainty, trust, and... Um, discernment, right? So that has to be developed. So that's what I want to cover with you guys on today's daily dose of light, love, and power, the light aspect within us and how that can show up in practicing discernment, knowing whether something is true or not true. And that takes practice. That takes That's a skill, just like riding a bike or playing a, a game or something. It's a skill. It has to be developed and practice and practice and practice. But you can be on one end of the spectrum of completely believing everything and you can be the other end of the spectrum and not believing anything. Either end of the spectrum is not right. You wanna be in the middle. You wanna be able to understand why you do what you do and then move forward with an open mind. Does that make sense? So I hope it does. Lots of blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, for those of you looking for healing, feel free to reach out to me on my website, christianrlong.com, and I look forward to serving you in the near future. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye.